Welcome to the European Father and Son Golf Championship. Open to professionals and amateurs alike, all competing here at the magnificent Lumine Golf Club on the Costa Dorada in Spain. Two fantastic courses provide the test for the father and son duos as 52 teams battle it out for the coveted scratch and handicap titles. Three rounds of golf will decide this year's champions as we find out who are the best father and son team in Europe. There's some great golf on the way and over the course of the next hour we'll witness some of the highs and the lows as the teams test their mettle against each other in a bid for glory. It's a full-on contest for the title but with plenty of fun along the way. The European Father and Son Championship is celebrating its fifth anniversary and for the event founder and director Toby Marsden, it's a special occasion. Fifth anniversary, we've got Sky Sports back again and that's really exciting. Uh, when we were on Sky a few years ago, that really accelerated the, uh, the popularity and the growth of our event and got, got our name out there. And it's an opportunity for people back home to, to actually see what we're getting up to here and to share the fantastic experience we're having here into people's homes. You wouldn't believe what goes into just running what seems like a, a simple golf tournament. It takes over a year, all preparations, negotiations, so a lot goes into it. It's a labour of love. It's run by a family, four families. That's the whole ethos. It's very easy to know what it is about this event that I love. The emotion on the golf course of fathers and sons playing golf. Golf is emotional as it is anyway, it's on your own ball. But you can see fathers literally biting their lips when they're seeing their sons putt. We had the Australian father and son champions come over a couple of years ago. This week we've had the American father and sons come. And I just think it's amazing that they will come from that far to play in a golf tournament. And I feel very honoured and very flattered that these guys come. This year has been a fantastic year. We couldn't have asked for a better year for our fifth anniversary. With the players getting ready for round one, we took the opportunity to find out what makes this event so special. I think it's great. I mean, it's, it's, it's fantastic bonding. And uh, to actually participate in sport with your, with your son is actually quite unique in many ways. Because, I mean, I've gone past the sort of football and rugby phase now. So, so golf enables the older guys to get out there and have a bit of fun. <laughs> and Luke's going through a swing change at the moment. So it's, uh, I've got to be watching him quite closely and he's got to listen to me. I don't like listening to him because I'm off a lower handicap, so I always think is if he, if fair play, if he played very well, but the fact that he's all, all over the place means that I don't really want to listen to him. This is the week of holiday that I have with my father, and in our busy lives today, this is something very exceptional that we get to come here for a week, play golf, enjoy, have some wine, and really kind of get back to knowing each other again. Time now for the teams to get to know the course as they set about round one. This year's British father and son handicap champions John and Paul O'Dee got off to a good start. The pair from Rickmansworth Golf Club were finding most of the Hills course greens in regulation, the team posting 38 points to share seventh place in the handicap category. Martin and Peter Crisp got to grips with the Hills course early and settled into their game well. Peter had driven the green on 18 and nearly made the eagle. In the end, a birdie finished the round off nicely, giving the English pair 40 points and a share of second place in the handicap event. Last year's handicap champions were Joe and Rymer Smith. It was Rymer who had the putt to win, but was he nervous? I just couldn't stop shaking. My heart was in my mouth and just hands couldn't stop shaking. I just thought so I was concentrating on getting the putt and winning because I thought if I made it, we win. So, yeah, I got it in the end. Joe, what's it like for you to be able to play sport with your son? 
Oh, it's unbelievable. To, to, to play it's one thing and to compete at the level. Um, Rhymer aims one day to be a golf professional. <laughs> And you know um, the grooming and the task uh, that, that's involved with that is, is wonderful. But um, competing with some great father-son competitors here, you know, we know we're up against it just as we was as we were last year. Um, wonderful, yeah, yeah, great challenge in life. The defending champions made a somewhat shaky start to their title defence on day one. 19 points on the front nine looked to have set the boys up nicely. However, bogeys at 10, 13, 14 and 16 put paid to what should have otherwise been a table-topping score. 36 points leaving them outside the top 10. Michael and Luke Hines from Mill Hill Golf Club played their way into equal seventh place for the first round with some excellent up and down work around the greens. Michael very nearly holding out with that effort. 38 points joining the ODs, the Hinos and the Stephensons. Joining the Crisps in equal second for the round were Team Syme, the very talented duo from Scotland comprising pro Stuart plus one handicapper son Connor who made light work of the course to put themselves in contention for both titles. They may even have had the lead if Stuart had been a little more confident with the putter. The first round though belonged to Team Ruth, Dag Graham off one and son James, a pro looking to make the move to the big time, eased into top spot without dropping a shot. 42 points, good enough to see them sitting above the rest of the field in both the handicap and scratch categories. So this is how the teams stand in the handicap event with just four points separating first from tenth and three teams just two behind the leaders. Round two on the Lakes course could see some changes in positions as they all go after the latest tee times possible. The scratch leaderboard is looking good for Team Ruth and Team Syme but no one will be counting their chickens just yet with two rounds still to go. Let's hear from the leaders. Started off nicely and uh, didn't drop a shot anywhere and uh, just had a wonderful day and the weather's been fantastic so great great start there the tees were a long way back and the course is playing along uh, no run on the ball and uh, I think I hit four three irons in a row on the front nine um, which is you know very unusual on any golf course so yeah like my dad said to go out there today with no drop shots is a, is a good effort so as the sun sets on a magnificent day of golf, attention's turned to round two. The Lakes course provided the challenge for the teams with some testing conditions and of course, plenty of water. One team making a splash in the fashion department at least were John and Michael Pickford. The Luxembourg lads creeping up the scratch leaderboard with a total score of 68 points. Good enough for ninth place. As well as the best of Europe competing this year, the event is open to teams worldwide and the tournament links up with its American counterpart to send the winners across the pond to compete. This year the Zebes have come to Spain to put their skills to the test. Round one was a little unkind to Mike and Brock who were still feeling the effects of jet lag. However, in round two they got going, 40 points shooting them up the table in the handicap category to leave them in equal four. Yes, I carried him all day today. It was it was a, it was a brutal round of golf. That was a makeup for yesterday. No. <laughs> no <it wasn't. laughs> the camaraderie here, the, the you know, we've made friends already, some great friends from a lot of different countries that you know, it's just, it's just fantastic. Six teams from Finland have come to the event this year and it was JP Heino and son Nicholas who had bragging rights after round two. 34 points in the scratch category left the Sarvik Golf Club duo in fifth place ahead of the final round. Martin and Peter Crisp lost a little ground on day two, the Lakes course proving a tough challenge for the Hertfordshire pair. 37 points in the handicap event left them in equal fourth and 33 points in the scratch event dropped them down to seventh. Moving up the leaderboard in round two were Team Mills, once again George showing some excellent short game work. That meant the team secured 40 points, moving them into third in both the handicap and scratch categories, an achievement watched proudly by George's grandfather. Well this event has become part of my life now because we've been here for the last two years and seeing the youngsters getting involved in sport is wonderful. Seeing George play golf, he's my, he's my idol isn't he? Uh, his father is a great, great golfer and George is doing very well today. He was, he was uh, two over par at eight, which is great. I would like him to win or at least be recognised in the top four or five 
That would be lovely again. Ireland made a big move in the second round as Frank Geary and Frank Geary Jr. shot a whopping 43 points to see them leap from 13th place to finish the day in second in the handicap event. Despite Team Geary shooting the best score of the round, Team Ruth kept themselves in top spot in both categories with an excellent 41 point haul. Playing alongside the Ruths were Team Tuima, with putt of the day going to Miko. Much to the delight of Dad Yuha. That 59 point score for both rounds irrelevant when you putt like that on camera. 85 points, the sum total for the Ruths, and that puts them in with a chance of making father and son history as they're in contention to win both titles. Confirmation of the scores from day two, and the Ruths remain top with a little breathing space over the rest of the field in the handicap category. The Geary's having the round of the day to move them into second place. In the scratch category, it's turning into a match play scenario for Team Ruth and Team Syme. They'll go out together in the final round. Let's hear from the leaders. I got very breezy on the back nine, uh, but now I play really well today. And uh, Dad came in at the end with a birdie and a net birdie, which was nice. So shoulders aren't that sore then? No, they were aching a bit after nine as he uh, hadn't better any of my scores, but no, played well today and uh, you know, tried to encourage him on the bat nine and he started to play a lot better, so that was good. Very well done to Graham and James. Join us after the break for more from the European Father and Son Golf Championship as the final round gets underway right here on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the European Father and Son Golf Championship. The final round is underway and it promises to be a roller coaster ride as the teams go in search of glory. Let's hear from your commentator, Clayton Lucas. Thanks, Simon. Luke Hines at the third. Long par three this, 207 yards. Luke, a four handicapper, watched by Carl Vincent. The two sons in this uh, four ball that's out. And that's an excellent shot from Luke. Great birdie chance for him. Rymer Smith with a tricky second shot here with the ball above his feet. Coming out of the rough. It looks to be going a little bit right. But he's got himself a little bit of luck as that one comes nicely off the bank, avoids the bunker and starts to trundle its way down towards the hole. He'll be pleased with that one. Brock Zeeb. Managed to go through the green with his uh, second shot. Has a putt back here for birdie. Well, that's a very good effort. Nice way to start the round. Tap in par. And two points on the board. Just checking he's not in Martin Crisp's way. Who's got a uh, pretty tricky par effort from where he is. Now Luke Hines after that magnificent tee shot with the chance to make a birdie here. Well, it's not his best effort, but as we delve into some father and son time, they tell us each other's best traits. My dad's stability on the golf course is very good. Uh, I can be out of the hole and even if he hits a bad shot, he's always wanted to be able to ensure that he gets sort of the two points that we need to, to kind of just move on, forget the hole and, and make sure that we keep progressing. Probably the best part of his game is probably his chipping because he's a little left-handed chipper. Generally he's, he's very positive. Um, he can hit some extremely good shots. Best golfing is his driving. I think he's, he's so long, ultra long off the tee for his age. Brock's best golfing trait is he's a money player. If there's you know, he just absolutely can knuckle down and hit any shot he has to hit. He's always positive and he's never negative. And when he hits a bad shot, he thinks, oh well, and just moves on. He's a phenomenal putter. Um, he, he rolls it so well. It's, it's phenomenal. That's, that's really how we won the United States tournament is because he putted well. Well, it's all about the short game. David Mills away at the first. He and George currently in third place in both categories. I think we're going to go for it today. 
I think we've been fairly cautious last couple of days and he's played great and it's about time I did something. I played, played some well, made some birdies, but today I think we're going to relax and go for it. Well, the family are watching on as George sends that one right down the middle of the first and they'll be giving those two plenty of support. Christoph Kjönigsedder with his second shot in at this 348-yard par-4 fourth. Talented young golfer, 13 handicapper, and he's playing pretty well, as shown by that shot. Back at the first, we can hear from Team Syme. Well, I think we need to go off to a fast start. Uh, yesterday, we were a bit slow at the blocks, and uh, we played the last 10 holes in 5-under, which obviously got us back in with a chance. We need that 5-under to happen at the start of the round tonight, uh, today, I should say, because uh, we're obviously 5 behind, so we've got a bit of catching up to do. Connor's definitely been playing with, uh, the better out of the two of us, so uh, we'll be looking for him to do it again, I think, uh, going out early on. Now, how are you enjoying the experience of playing father and son? Oh, it's awesome. Uh, it's really good. Just, well, you've been out before and he, it was awesome when he came out with his dad. and I'm really enjoying it as well, yeah. That's yeah, good. Has dad been playing? Have you got sore shoulders or has he been pulling his weight? He's had his moments, but... Uh, <laughs> Go on, say it. It's all nah, you. Mostly me. <laughs> the true thoughts. <laughs> Well, it's something to behold. Stuart Syme is a pro, and the son Connor, still an amateur, plays off of plus 1.7. And yet, the way that they are playing, you'd think it was Connor who was the pro and Dad was the amateur. Won't be long before Connor does turn pro, you feel. And when he does, well, watch out. Excellent player, great technique, wonderful balance, and his rhythm, nice and slow to start with as he takes it away and then just rips into it. Let's hear from our leaders. We've, um, we've managed 36 holes without dropping a shot. Uh, if we can do that, then um, we'll take some catching, hopefully. Uh, James is playing really nicely. Uh, there's no wind today, so hopefully we'll uh, have a good day. Now, the main focus for you guys is the scratch competition. You've got a decent lead. What's the ethos going, or the mindset going into this as leaders, as opposed to chasing? Um, sort of main aim is to make as birdies, many birdies as we can and then uh, you know, it will be very hard to catch a five shot lead if you can go out and shoot seven or eight under then uh, you know, the guys are going to have to shoot in the fifties to, to catch us. Well some wise words from young James, Dad Graham with the tee shot to get them underway, nice swing from him, plays off of one, it's three quarter handicap for this tournament, Stableford in both the scratch and the handicap event. James Ruth, Euro Pro Tour player, and he had a second at Longhurst Hall just prior to this event, looking if he can to make it to the big time, and with a swing like that, it won't be long before he does. Nicholas Hino, tee shot at the par three third. Dad JP looking on, and they're alongside Mark and Jack, pretty today. Six finished teams here in this tournament, nice shot from Nicholas, although knowing him he'll probably want to have been closer than that. Joe Smith, the defending handicap champions and 83 points. They're getting themselves back into it, but it's not looking like they're going to be holding on to their title this year. Well, that's an excellent shot from Joe. Chance for a birdie for him. Mark Pretty with his tee shot at the third. Son Jack looking on. Mark plays off nine, Jack plays off eight, but that is not the shot of a single figure handicapper. I think Mark's beginning to feel the pressure of the final round. We're only at the third. Now Andrew Stocks with a little bunker trouble here at the sixth. He and Dad Howard in fourth place in the scratch competition at the start of this final round. And the three handicapper has just made an excellent recovery shot. Good chance of par for him. He and Dad play at Sandmore Golf Club in Leeds. Back to the third, Jack Pretty with Dad Mark looking on. Mark missed the green completely to the right. But fortunately, in a bed ball competition like this, if Jack can get on the green, they'll have a chance of getting themselves a few points. He's nicely on. He's going to be close. It's gone in. Unbelievable. Hole in one for Jack Pretty. And he's ecstatic. Dad is going to be feeling the pinch, that's for sure, because that's going to cost him 52 teams in this tournament, and he's got to buy them all a drink. Well, it's well worth another look. Dad looking on, I'm sure he wasn't thinking, don't get this in, son, I can't afford it. He's probably thinking, get this on the green, son. We need a few points. 
Not only has he got it on the green, he's managed to make it release up towards the hole. Eventually, right into the middle of the cup. That is a magnificent shot. Yep, it's still in there. And Jack can take that one out. And they can celebrate good and proper. Magnificent shot. One that will live long in the memory, I'm sure. And I'm sure as well, you'll never get tired of seeing that one again. Now, Graham Ruth with a, a rather anticlimactic putt for par but in it goes two points for them they're off and running 37th hole with no drop shot for team Ruth so all the teams are out on the course and it looks like it's going to be a battle royale for the coveted scratch and handicap trophies join us after the break for more high-class golf action right here on Sky Sports Welcome back to the European Father and Son Golf Championship from the Lumine Golf Club here in Spain. Let's get straight back to the action and rejoin your commentator, Clayton Lucas. One of the longer par fours here at the six, 410 yards. As Brock Zeeb looks to get it on the green in regulation. Which he does very nicely. Very little wind around today. Bit of a breeze for him as he played that one in. And as we look at George here at the uh, par 4 fourth it's uh, completely calm and that's an excellent chip he's a great little player around the greens George Mills definitely you feel a star of the future now yeah, Brock looking for a birdie the American father and son champions actually won the American event back in 2006 at Myrtle Beach and then again this year and I was talking to them before the start of this round and they were saying that there's over 900 teams compete in the American father and son championships and to come top of that pile is by no means an easy task two very talented golfers he and uh, dad Mike works for the US Treasury Department does Brock so you don't want to be messing with him now, Frank Geary Jr. with a putt for par. He and Dad shot up the leaderboard in round two. 43 points they managed to secure to put them in contention in the handicap category. Frank Jr. should have no bother clearing up from here. George will be looking to do the same as well. Quite a fiery relationship Frank and Frank have on the course, that's for sure, but it does seem to work for them. I think mostly it's uh, Frank Jr. just having a pop at Dad to get the reaction. Good work from George, a great up and down from him. Nice work, and that keeps the Mills in contention in the handicap category. They finished third last year, looking to go one, possibly two better. Mark Pretty probably still got his mind on that hole in one that Jack achieved at the third although he seems to have taken his mind off it for a moment lovely little bump and run from him to end up behind the hole Connor Syme plays at the Dumfries and County Golf Club in Scotland along with his dad and typically long drive from him just leaving him a short iron in and he's played it magnificently he'll have a short putt for birdie now James Ruth having seen what Connor's done looking to try and get his ball inside if he can he's got a marker oh and he's got it inside hasn't he excellent work a little bit of spin and a pair of them left with uh, similar length putts Two teams from Denmark, Simon Stephenson with his tee shot to the uh, par 3 eighth. Dad Finn watching on the other team from Denmark out of the same golf club. Hen is uh, Neil and Nicholas Elston. That one though, it's gone a bit right, although it's ended up all right. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be able to get himself up and down. He's not too happy with it, but Dad's not too bothered. Nicholas Hino with a par opportunity here at the 7th. 
Playing some steady golf as the youngster. Nice par, nice two points. Now, we've heard about their best traits. What about their worst traits as we share a little more father and son time? His chipping can be brilliant, but it can be pitiful for someone who's such a good golfer. He, he tends to lose it if, if he has a bad shot and it's really hard to get him back on track. I don't know if I should be saying this, obviously, when I was playing today, but my dad's had a, a few years where he's had he struggled from the shanks. Short pats. He misses quite a few. <laughs> his worst golfing habit is blaming himself with his putter. Um, he's a good putter, and if he gets down on himself, um, it's with the putter. His, his driving can be quite weak sometimes. Putting, I guess. When I'm trying to encourage him to play eight and nine pitch and runs, he likes the Phil Mickelson approach with a 60 degree wedge. <laughs> Self-confidence. He, he doubts himself out there uh, when he shouldn't. Uh, whether it's whether it's sometimes a, a, an easy shot or a difficult shot, sometimes he, he, he just seizes up a little bit and, and won't quite pull the trigger as well as he should. All the teams will be hoping that none of those traits will be on display today during this final round. Paul O'Day with a tricky little shot here, got to get over the bunker, he's done that nicely, and then stop it on the green, and he's done that very well. You have a great opportunity to make a part. He, along with Dad John, the British father and son handicap champions. Frank Geary, senior, with his third shot to this par four sixth. Needs to get it close to give himself a chance of making par, and he's done that very well. Peter Crisp. Third shot into the par five seventh. Dad Martin said his chipping can be poor for someone so good. And that is very good. Nice bit of side spin to take it down towards the hole. He'll be pretty pleased with that when he gets up there and realises how close it is. Now, Carl Vincent, great young golfer. Had a chat with his dad and we were both in agreement about the fact that temperament is probably the one thing that does cost him on occasion. If he does make a bad shot, he lets it stick with him for probably longer than it should. But that's all part of the learning process in sport. As good a player as you might be technically and physically, the ones that separate themselves from the rest are those that have the mental ability to go with it. Uh, Luke Hines. That looks close. Oh, unlucky. Well, you get the feeling that one of these birdie attempts is going to drop for Luke. He's putting himself in all the right places on the greens. Just not so lucky with the wand at the moment. Now, Brock Zeeb looking to get hot with the putter. Chance for an eagle, having driven the green in two and he got the pace right but just slightly off with the accuracy little tap in birdie for him well as the players made their way around the stunning hills course two teams were emerging from the pack in the scratch competition scotland's stewart and connor syme were hard on the hills of england's graham and james ruth stewart at the sixth nailing his approach to the green but failing to nail the putt instead settling for a par and two points which was matched by james ruth at the par 5 seventh, James went for the green in two. And found it, which left himself an eagle putt. Close, but no cigar, leaving a tap in birdie. Connor Syme matching him with his birdie, which he repeated at the par 3 eighth. The Ruths only managing a par, bringing Team Syme a little closer as they played nine. Connor leading the way with a precision strike. Well, it seemed as if both young guns were feeding off each other's great shots as James put his ball inside Connor's as they matched each other blow for blow. Connor had the first chance for a birdie, but was denied by the borough. Another par and two more points. James opting for pace in his birdie attempt, burning the hole and having to settle for a par. So as the players stood on the 10th, one thing is certain, Stu and Connor Syme are going to push Graham and James Ruth all the way in this scratch event. And that's a great shot from Stuart. 
to put them in with a chance of birdie on that par three. Now in the handicap tournament, the Ruths are also in front and being chased hard by the rest of the field. Martin Crisp at the ninth had this putt for birdie, but it stayed high, much to his dismay. Brock Zeeb had this putt for par, which eventually dropped, much to his delight. The home stretch beckoning and the Zeebs firmly in the mix. Two other teams firmly in the mix, the Geary's and the Mills. Frank Geary Jr. dialing in the pin at the par three eighth. There would be no birdie though, but a solid par worth three points, followed by two more at the ninth. And the Geary's were on a roll, only slightly tempered by a single point at the tenth, as they kept their hopes of taking the handicap title very much alive. Playing partners David and George Mills were also scoring well. George taking the limelight at the eighth as he found the 195 yard all carry par three. Unfortunately, there'd be no birdie, a tap in par for three points, followed up with two at the ninth and one at the tenth, meaning 104 points and still very much in contention in the handicap event. Join us after the break for the conclusion to this year's championship to find out who'll be crowned this year's father and son kings of Europe right here on Sky Sports. Welcome back to the European Father and Son Golf Championship. Just before we head back to the action, Luminate Golf Club's Callie Carson explains why this is an important event on their golfing calendar. To host an event like this is important for us to be able to showcase our resort, our beautiful golf courses and the region. Uh, we're just in the start of, of, of making this re region and Luminate Golf Club known for the public. And it's great to have so many players from different parts of Europe coming here and experience what we can offer. Hilt is cut in pine trees, it's pine trees left right of the fairway and is target golf. On hills our uh, feature hole is uh, number 13. It's a tough par 4, a little bit downhill with a lake in front of the green, cut out in the, in the mountains, it's a, it's a beautiful hole. 18 on hills is a typical risk reward hole. In contention on the final day you really need to take a good decision what you're going to do off the tee. It's a blind tee shot. Even if you lay up in front of the lake, into the dog leg, there's a good chance of making a birdie. You got out of bounds to the right, and you got the lake covering the front and the back of the green. Uh, so it's a tough decision. I'm sure some of the teams will be going for the green in one from the tee when they get to 18 a little later on. Yeah, Nicholas Heino, a little short of the green. Got some work to do, and that's a lovely chip. Carl Vincent with a putt for birdie on 18. Dad Dave's out of the hole, so could do with this one dropping. Well, round it goes and in it drops, and then that's a lovely finish from Carl. 113 points for Team Vincent. Simon Stephenson with his birdie attempt here at 17. Well, he knew straight away it was going to miss. He was up very early. He'll have a little tap in par. And that means Dad Finn can pick his marker up and they can move on to the next hole. George Mills. With a testy little putt for par here. And that yes. one. Well Another ball that moves Good around time. the outside before it drops in. High five for Dad, who's become a bit of a spectator yeah. over the course of this final round. But he certainly won't be worried about that. Now, Nicholas Hino. After that magnificent chip, can he top it off with a great putt? Yes, it can, and even though it took a bobble on the way, it still went in the back of the cup. And a special high note celebration. So Graham Ruth with James, Connor and Stewart all looking on. Elevated tee and 211 yards isn't that long when your tee's that high up. And Graham's just overcooked that one a little bit. Mike Z with his third shot into this par 5 16th. Mike is a shipping and receiving foreman back in the US of A. 10 handicapper. And he rates his favourite golfer as Arnold Palmer. And that's not a bad effort. Two putts for a par. High note, having gone through the green at the 17th. And that's not a bad chip back, is it? 
You have a good opportunity to make par from there. Two opportunities for a par, the team sign. Connor with the first chance with this longer putt. Dan Stewart with probably a couple of feet. So still an opportunity for two points for the team. Connor just makes sure, gets one on the board. But that's pretty much the way things have gone for Team Simon, their bid to try and close down Team Ruth. Whatever they've done, Ruth have matched them, which means they haven't been able to close that gap. Martin Crisp with a very good effort on 16. It's a very quick green, and that one sloping all the way down and back to the fairway. And the downhill putt was dealt with very nicely. Now, John O'Dee looking to get close on 18. Well, that'll do nicely. You'll have a couple of putts for par. Outside chance for birdie to finish things off. Nicholas Hino looking for his par at 17. This Bubba Watson as his favourite golfer. Loves his swing. He certainly does hit the ball a long way. Does Watson, so too. Does Nicholas Hino. Now, Finn Stephenson with a chance for a par, but more importantly, a chance to get on the scoreboard, which he does... And that's what it means to him. He's watched son Simon score the points all day long. And that's a nice way to finish the round. Another player with a massive drive is Brock Zeeb. Just a little wedge in here at 17. And he's stopped that one very quickly. Putt for birdie for him. A rare opportunity for uh, David Mills to score. And he does. Very nicely done. And Dad on the scoreboard. Jack Pretty coming to the end of his round and can't wait, I expect, to get up to the balcony, up to the clubhouse and tell everybody what he's done. Although news of that has spread pretty quickly around the course. That's a lovely shot. A real buzz up in the clubhouse after uh, Jack had nailed his hole in one. Oh, fortunately though for Martin Crisp, he's unable to nail that putt. And he's not happy with his putter. But as they say, a bad workman blames his tools. And we'll leave it at that. Uh, Graham Ruth, who's incidentally a golf tour operator for a uh, pretty big ferry company. And he named uh, Sevi Ballesteros his, his sporting hero and was fortunate enough to actually work with him as part of his job. And he can't talk highly enough of the great man. And that's a pretty good shot from Graham. George looking to find the green here at 17. Nothing seems to daunt him, does it? And that is a magnificent effort. Hard to believe he's only off 12. It won't be long before he's down to single figures, if not down to lower than five. Now Stuart with a tricky little bunker shot. That's very well played. Hardly any room to work with. Ball above his feet, and he's left it stone dead. Now Mark Pretty. Can he have the final say on proceedings before he has to go and get his wallet out? Indeed he can. Nice birdie for Mark. Well, it's been a fantastic round of golf for those four and for Jack in particular. One he'll never forget and one Dad will never forget either as they all get to do the high no handshake. James Ruth at the 16th. Birdie opportunity for him. Oh, and that one straight in the middle of the cup. So 118 points now for Team Ruth, and they've opened up what appears to be an unassailable lead. Well, if Geary can knock this in, that would give them 116. And maybe if they can do something special on 18, they might be able to put a bit of pressure on Team Ruth in the handicap event. Martin Crisp, having put behind him the troubles with his putter at 17. Going after the pin here at 18, and that's a magnificent shot. The ball actually pitching and then going back into its own pitch mark. Ruth, another player who's uh, almost driven the green here on 17. A short pitch for him, but 
He hasn't quite flown it far enough. Yep, that's how he should have done it. Martin Chris, but 18 for birdie. Can his putter redeem itself? Yes, he can. And that means it'll stay in his bag. This pump for Martin. 112 points for Team Crisp. 114 points for Team Zeeb, who finished on a high as well. Now, George Mills here at this 306-yard par four. He won't be able to go for the green, but he's going to try and cut off some of the corner, no doubt. Leave himself in prime position to get on to the 18th in two. And he's done exactly that. Lovely shot from George. He's outdriven some of the dads here today indeed during the course of the week now James chance of birdie oh, he was unlucky and it's ended up behind the hole well, looking to make this his uh, second to last shot at 18 David Mills former Euro Pro Tour winner now a pro coach and you can see why George is so good for someone so young and also see why he's going to be an exceptional player and no doubt will be a pro one day. Well, that day will be coming soon, no doubt, for Connor Syme as he nails another putt. The plus two handicapper. Just waiting for the right moment. Education first. Frank Geary with a rather long putt, a rather quick putt. And still with a rather long putt left. And he knows it. Well, Stuart Syme not going for the green. Keeping it safe. Playing steady golf. And that one looks to be A1 right down the middle. Should leave him a wedge into the green. Perfect shot from Stuart Syme. A chance then for David to uh, finish with a flourish and a chance for him to uh, add to the score, which George has accumulated most of the day. Ooh. Well, it's not going to be a birdie finish, but he'll have a tap-in par. Oh, well missed. Well, not the best of finishes then for T Mills and what's been an amazing round of golf. George has been an absolute star. And when it was Dad's turn to shine, it wasn't quite so bright. Still, it should be good enough to see them take second spot in the handicap competition, just one point ahead of Team Geary, who have played their part, and the crowd certainly enjoying what they've seen. Both Connor and Stuart were in prime position coming into 18, and they were both looking to finish in style. One of them hoping for the birdie. It was Connor who had the best opportunity. Once again, that very fluid putting style almost paying off. But just like the Mills, the short ones, proving a little bit elusive on 18. So job done for Connor and Stewart who take second place in the scratch tournament with their 116 points but it was a birdie finish for James Ruth and that's always a good way to finish and sealing the deal for he and dad as they take the scratch and handicap titles Connor and Stewart gave it their best effort in the scratch competition but in the end the Ruths were just too good so confirmation of the leaderboard team Ruth in their first father and son championship laying claim to the handicap and scratch titles Stuart and Connor Syme got close to the roots but couldn't capitalise on their opportunities. Let's hear from the winners. I've never felt so nervous. Honestly, I was struggling to get on the card, which was a bit of a problem for me because James kept mentioning it. And rest assured, had I not got on the card, he would have kicked my backside from here home. So it was, uh, it was I was very relieved when I made a par and uh, got myself onto the card because he had a dreadful chip and it was just, for me, it was heaven. And uh, after that, I'm really relaxed. We played well. James played exceptionally well, just didn't hold any putts, but then hit some stunning golf shots on the back nine. It was brilliant. We've had a fantastic time, absolutely fantastic.
Luminate Golf Club's general manager, Callie Carson, hands over the trophies to Graham and James as they make father and son history by claiming both titles. The Ruth set the pace and in the end, they couldn't be caught. That's all from another fantastic European Father and Son Golf Championship. We'll see you next time. For more information, go to www.fatherandsongolf.co.uk.